Culture is defined as ideas, customs, and social behaviors of a particular people. Alternatively, culture is a manifestation of a people's worldview that includes their language, their food, their architecture, the clothes that they wear, and their music. Culture thus links us to identity, which is basically a critical piece of one's personal worldview that develops as they take in, interpret, and adopt, sometimes reject, the beliefs, behaviors, values, and norms of the communities in their life. Based on this premise, it is very unfortunate that some cultures or traditional practices are being lost within the context of Africa or within the Bantu people, a term that I'm going to use frequently in this video. Okay, before we get to the why part, I just want to explain two concepts that often conflate, uh, which is culture and tradition. Culture is dynamic, something that we really need to be clear about, whilst tradition is stationary or static. An example of culture is uh, a wedding. Uh, within Isindebele or within Debele culture, a wedding becomes a cultural component and tradition now becomes something that is practiced differently among families. Silom timba, that is a form of a wedding. You've got now white, uh, white weddings. Those are now, beca those become the traditions that are different from culture. <laughs> A story is found not in a stagnant tradition but in the rich textures and context of everyday rural experiences, humor and the people where long-standing tradition and modern trends meet. The Wandu people are urbanizing, ever more westernizing and globalizing too, thereby losing their true identity and what truly represents them. Therefore, in keeping up with trends, quite a number of Bandu children are being raised in cities that are removed from their spirituality, from their customs and from their traditions. So on the spirituality, also looking at the dynamic between culture and tradition, conversations about African spirituality become something that is very difficult to do. As the current setup views this practice either as demonic, either as primitive and something that is very evil. So having such practices or having a core by children to understand their genealogy, knowing clearly that African spirituality is based on one's genealogy, becomes something that's very difficult to do. So based on this dynamic approach of culture and tradition, and why cultures are vanishing, in this, for example, in the Sindebele culture, our culture is well-defined values that include integrity, wisdom, valor, humanity, honor, and wealth. It is impossible to speak of our cultural ceremonies and festivities without the pomp and pageantry displayed mostly by the way people are dressed. Clothing that serves as an expression, image and personality of a culture. Now let's look at the why part uh, which I would want to dwell more. Firstly looking at the cultural diversity. But I've got some good news. We've just launched our Patreon account and people have been asking us to do this. Uh, guys, open your Patreon so that we can support your work. So just navigate your way to patreon.com, um, search Makriza Made Me Cook. So the first package that, we're going to, that we have created is what's called Ubuntu Package. And that's five bucks. That five bucks will give you access to behind the scenes, it will give you uh, access to the content or the videos that are going to publish on our channel. Please support the work. We'll leave that link in the description box below. Patreon, support our work as we document Africa's diverse food culture. Now back to the why uh, part on why some cultures are vanishing. I'll start off with cultural diversity and something of a beautiful thing when you see different cultures assimilating and sort of like becoming one. Uh, but in, in, in that oneness, you would understand that there are several cultures uh, that are lost along the way. Uh, and only the dominant cultures sort of like lead that process of the cultural diversity. And don't get me wrong, uh, we've seen in cosmopolitan cities where you find different people coming together of different cultures and they find a way to sort of like communicate together, they find a way to actually share ideas and we've seen some recipes that have been developed when people come together. But it is very important also to know that within that union there are the dominant cultures that sort of like lead the way 
uh, and you find uh, cultures maybe because of demographics maybe because of numbers their cultural practices are sort of somewhat lost along the way so let's look at demographics um, or just when people move from one place to the other and i'll just give you an example of uh, people residing from my country Zimbabwe when they travel outside the country to seek greener pastures uh, seek better economic opportunities so example when one moves let's say from Gobulawa going to Scotland or the UK or uh, America or anywhere there are several cultural or traditional practices that they learned at home and once they boarded that airplane and they want to get to that place where they're going to reside now there are certain practices that they will not be able to practice. Give you an example. A Sindabe Mkoro is called Ugutetela, or within the African culture, Ugutetela, which is communing with one's ancestors, either to give thanks or when there is something bad that has happened within the family. So imagine how difficult it is now for someone to do this practice when they are in another foreign country. That now becomes a, a challenge on its own. Then now, if you look at element of food, then uh, take note from Uba Credo Mutwa, may his soul rest in peace, uh, who wrote an incredible uh, book called Indaba, My Children. I think I've, I've read that book more than 10 times. So there's a passage that reads towards the completion of the book, where he talks about that no Frenchman would ever visit him and eat uh, Uputu and Amasi. I think it was Uputu and Amas. But why do the Africans now run to other foreign people's food cultures and neglect their own? Cultures that are so alien uh, to them. I'm paraphrasing this. So within the food, uh, there are other food. It's a super just cooler and we're no more proud of that. And every time we grow, we sort of like adopt the food cultures of, of other people. The least adopted cuisine in this world is African food. Yeah, yes, because it's true. despised, the people themselves are despised, and the Africans are the worst culprits. They fly aircraft, but they don't save the ice chwala. They, they don't <laughs> save. Go whether it's Kenyan Airways, Malawian Airways, South African Airways, whatever. They are ashamed of themselves, ashamed of their food. And that is a disaster for Africa. Yeah. But we are so afraid because we associate Umkanda and other traditional cuisines with the primitivity. Yes, yes. We think to eat those things, yeah. you are uh, displaying your primitivity. Yes. There is nothing more disastrous. That's why I say the African is a disaster. Culture uh, is a common element of society and every human community seeks stability. Uh, just like how nature does, yet no society can be entirely stable. So a society is always undergoing uh, change. And you see now with the element of cultural diversity. So every facet of society is affected by this transformation, including the political, the economic, the behavioral, attitudes, the manners, and the way of life. Another um, uh, factor and something that's close to, to my heart is the element of language and how our indigenous language is slowly disappearing. So language is, as that was spoken about 20 years ago, it is not the same as this in the way that's spoken now. Yes, Ulim Le Pugile. Abalu Ponko Labantuana, no. Aulimi, Aulim Lu, Ilonjo, Ulstan Sayoga Pool. Mobala Zingua lose a school. I, a song while lose a Bantuana Tinesa Sunda, yes, Cati Seto. Yes, Cat Seto Sapalo, OPM Ganja, Osikoko. But also, the fun part, that's also a beautiful thing on its own. It means that we're able to accommodate the changing dynamics of that language. And I know it's not only Sindebele, you look at several other indigenous languages, Bantu languages, that are being affected by this. Now, I know this is a lengthy uh, discussion. And I would love to hear your views on this topic. Do you think cultures are vanishing or do you think cultures are evolving, especially within the context of African culture? Thank you so much. Um, I'll catch you on the next one. Principal Masang here. Remember, please subscribe, turn on the bell notification and support the movement as we document Africa's diverse food culture. Togos.